Hola chicos, aquí estamos otra vez. Uh, this is the this might be the last video in the series of A to Z because we're in T now. We'll see. May may go into two videos. Bueno, ahora tenemos una expresión uh, muy para mí muy graciosa. It's very funny. I like this one. I discovered this expression in a book that I read called El Último Catón. If you if you can get a hold of it. Um, I'm not sure who, who the author is. It's, um, she's written a lot of books, but it's called El Último Catón. It is fabulous. It makes the Da Vinci Code look like a, a child story. It's very good. But in that, they kept using this expression. It came up a number of times about this guy who was a bit miserable. And he kept saying, eh, Tenía la cara de pocos amigos. Okay? So the, the expression is, Tener la cara de pocos amigos, okay? So really, what, what's it saying? To have the face of few friends, okay? Our, what we use in, in the UK is to say, um, to have the face, have, he's, he's got a face like a smacked ass. that's what we say, <laughs> which is a great expression. It's just to, to have a miserable face, like a not happy, not happy face, okay? So they, they use this, Bueno, sí, él, y él tenía la cara de pocos amigos. He wasn't happy. He didn't look happy at all. All right? So it's just a nice way of saying it. A face of few friends. Luego, tener mucha ilusión. Okay? To have a lot of illusion. And what does that mean? It means to be really excited. When, we, when we're talking about an up-and-coming event, um, you can say, well, you know, we before we talked about tener ganas is to be looking forward to something, but also you can talk about having excitement, have an illusion. You say, sabes, tengo mucha ilusión de, de ver a mi familia. Tengo mucha ilusión de, de irme de vacaciones. Tengo mucha ilusión de empezar mi trabajo nuevo. I'm really looking forward to starting my new job. I'm looking forward to going on holiday, seeing my family. ¿Qué tal estás? Oh, tengo mucha ilusión. I'm really excited. ¿Por qué? Why? Okay. So, tener ilusión. Illusion. Yeah. Not, estoy excitado. All right. False friend means something completely different. It means an excitement in another way. Okay. So, tengo mucha ilusión. Yo tengo mucha ilusión porque este es el último video. O... Oh. El penúltimo video. Okay, this is a nice one, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about this one. So yes, we're going to go into two videos. Tener nervios en el estómago. Okay, tener nervios en el estómago. So to have nerves in the stomach. So that's to have um, butterflies, uh, to be worried, frightened. Okay. But this is, if you've if you studied French, you'll know that this is a, the same type of it, situation in Spanish. The word nervioso has a, a meaning that we don't, we they use it in a way that we don't in English, okay? If I say to you, I'm nervous, what that means is I'm like this, Ooh, I've got something up and coming, I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak in public, or I'm going to have to do something. I'm nervous, okay? worried, anxious. But when a Spanish person, a Spanish speaker says, eh, estoy nervioso, okay, nervioso, it also can mean kind of like nervioso, angry, short-tempered, yeah? So it isn't just being frightened, it doesn't mean you're frightened or, or worried about something, it means I'm a bit cheesed off, yeah, to use it. Another expression, a bit cheesed off. I'm not happy. Estoy nervioso. I'm, I'm like, oh, like this, very anxious. So it's more like anxiety than it is fear. All right? So la, the expression is, tener nervios en el estómago. Okay. ¿Qué te pasa? Oh, no sé. Tengo nervios en el estómago. ¿Por qué? Mañana tengo un examen. What's up with you? I, I don't know. I've got, like, I've got, I'm fright. I've got nerves. I've got nerves in my stomach. I've got butterflies in my stomach. Why? I've got an exam tomorrow. Okay, so it's that kind of thing. Tengo nervios en el estómago. This one's great. Like this one. Tener pinta de algo. Okay, pinta. P 
Pintar is the verb to paint. Okay, pintar. So if somebody has the paint of, we say he's got the look of. Okay, uh, ese hombre tiene tiene pinta de de ser malo. Okay, he has the look of, of being bad. He's got a bad look about him. Okay. Um, eh, ¿Qué pasa hoy? ¿Tienes pinta de, de, de estar un poco enfadada? What's up? You've got a look of, of being angry or whatever. An angry look about you. Okay? So, pinta. The user, in a way, um, uh, to, to describe a look, and it can be quite, you know, positive, but quite often it's negative. Like somebody walks in and they're in a bit of a state, all right? Bit of a state. Quite often you'll hear somebody say, ¿Qué pintas? ¿Qué pintas tiene esa mujer? What is she looking like? What is she wearing? Yeah. ¿Qué pintas? ¿Qué pintas? So, ¿qué pintas? is like, not good. If somebody, if you hear somebody look at you and say, ¿Qué pintas? It's time to go home and get changed. Okay? <laughs> okay. Then we've got, uh, tener su encanto. Tener su encanto. And it means to have its charm. Okay, you can say, uh, for example, Bueno, he, sí, he conocido el norte de, de España y, y tiene su encanto. So I've been to the north of Spain and, and it has its charm. Llueve mucho, pero tiene su encanto. It rains a lot, but it has its charm. Tiene su encanto. Okay, from the verb encantar, to charm, to enchant. Okay, so tiene su encanto means it has its charm. I don't know, normally you're qualifying that with I don't really like it. It has its charm, but I'm not that keen on it, you know, or whatever, however you want to use that. Okay. This is a great one. I don't know how we, I think we'll just do this in one go. We'll finish it off, okay, and then it's done. Um, this one is, is kind of like what's called an oxymoron, okay, which is a lovely word. And it just means that it's it's a, a contradiction in itself. Um, and it's un poco mucho. Un poco mucho. All right? And it's used exactly like in English when we say um, uh, a little bit too much. Yeah. He did it, he did it a lot. Yeah, a, a little bit too much. Okay? So a little bit, un poco, too much. Un poco mucho. Yeah? You could say something like, ¿Sabes, Joet? Ese hombre en el, en, en el, no sé, en la fiesta, hablaba mucho. Sí, un, un poco mucho, eh? A little bit too much. O, sí, él hablaba un poco. He said that ironic thing of like, uh, yeah, he, he talked a little bit, didn't he? Ese hombre hablaba un poco, ¿no? Sí, un poco mucho. Yeah, that's exactly how you'd use it. That sounds better. So that man spoke a bit, didn't he? Eh? Yeah, a bit too much. Un poco mucho. Yeah. So normally, I suppose, if you say normally, you're talking about so the irony of yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit too much. Okay. Un poco mucho. Okay. Um, vaya. Vaya. Okay, now, understand that. Vaya is go usted it's the imperative to go usted just like venga is to come usted all right so what happens in spain is both of those words but let's talk about vaya vaya is a way that they start lots of expression lots of sentences they'll say vaya dia vaya lío well, what a day what a mess Okay, and it's their way of saying what a, well, the way that we say what a. Vaya hombre, what a man. Yeah? So they use that a lot. Whenever you see that at the front of a sentence with, you know, vaya and then something, then it just means what a. Okay? And while we're on, it isn't on there, but well, let's talk about venga. Okay? You'll have heard venga. Now, this, I think this is very much focused in Spain. Okay, because I know in, in uh, Mexico, certainly they don't use this. But 
when somebody in a Spanish speaker says to you venga okay now that is the imperative for usted come all right but they're not saying usted they're just saying like come on then or go on eh, vale ven a tomar un, un café conmigo venga it's like come and have a coffee with me come on go on come on yeah so venga so vaya what see Vaya video, what a video. It can be used positive as well, positively as well, eh? Vaya película, más buena. What a great film, okay? And venga, you'll hear people on the, on the telephone like this. Vale, venga, vale, venga, vale, venga. It's like, yeah, okay, right, okay, right, okay, go on then, go on then, yeah? Okay, bien. Last two, vivir una aventura. All right, in the book that, that I've written, the, one of the very first things it says is that, that Victor, who's this guy who goes to Spain, wants to have an adventure, okay? And I put in the book, quiere tener una aventura. He wants to have an adventure. Direct, literal translation. Error, error, Cynthia said. Uh, you can't have that. I said, well, what is it? why? She said, oh, quiere tener una aventura means he wants to have an affair, a sexual affair. Oh, so how do you say it? Well, if you want to have an adventure, literally go to a country and have an adventure, it's tener, no it isn't, it's vivir una aventura, to live an adventure. So, yo quiero ir a España porque quiero vivir una aventura. Quiero vivir una aventura. Um, okay, so that's how, so just bear that in mind, all right? So just be careful, you want to say, uh, uh, I'm, hello there, you, uh, yeah, I'm going to Spain, I want to have an adventure. Mm, don't do that. Okay, I want to live an adventure. And then the last one is vivir la cultura. Okay, and again, for example, people who go to travel abroad, they want to experience the culture. They want to, to be part of the culture. That's what we would say, to be part of it. Well, a Spanish expression would be to live the culture. Yo quiero mudarme a España y quiero vivir la cultura. That means to be part of the culture. Or, si yo voy a pasar seis meses en México y durante seis meses voy a vivir la cultura. So I'm going to spend six months in Mexico and during that, those six months, I'm going to be part of the culture. I'm going to get into the culture. Okay? Dos cosas que son importantes, eh? Es muy importante vivir la cultura en el país, ¿no? En México, en cualquier país. Vivir la cultura. Okay, so that's, that's it. There are no W's, X's, Y's or Z's. So that's the end of our A to Z of um, expressions. Look, this is not a definitive list, this is just a tiny example, but it gives you something to work on. What do you do? Don't try and learn them all, don't try and have them all, try and use them all. Just take some. Just take one or two that you like. The same expression that you use in English, choose the one that you, that you would use in Spanish and use that because that's the one that comes more naturally to you. You don't have to say them all. But it's so you understand when you hear them as well. Pues, eso es todo. Muchísimas gracias. Eh, nos vemos en los próximos blogs de Cintia y yo. ¿No? O de Cintia y de mí. ¡Hasta luego! ¡Adiós!